Good afternoon. My name is Ted Griswold, and I work in food service at Potter's Ranch. This afternoon, I'm going to be introducing you to a recipe uh, for chocolate chip scones. I'm going to be baking a gluten-free variety today, but I'll also tell you how you can make it uh, using regular flour. Before I begin, I'd like to ask a question or two. How are you doing? Are you hopeful? Or are you feeling perhaps hopeless as this situation we've been in continues to drag on? Uh, a lot of how we perceive a situation, life, crisis, will depend on what we're putting our hope in. Are we putting our hope in our jobs? Are we putting our hope in the economy? Are we putting our hopes in the government or the healthcare system? Are we putting our hope in our skill set, our health? <laughs> we found out how fragile that can be lately. So I would like to direct you to the God of the Bible, because that's really where our hope is found, if we want real hope. And there's a couple places in the Bible I would refer you to uh, to read. One is Psalm 42. The writer of that psalm was going through a really hard time. And as he's processing this, writing the psalm, he's also doing a little self-talk. And he's reminding himself, put your hope in God. That's where hope rightly belongs. Our trust should be in him. Psalm 62, same kind of idea. Um, in verse 5, he says, find hope. Sorry, find rest, O oh my soul, in God alone. In him is my hope. And then one more place to turn, and that's Isaiah 40, verses 27 to 31. Great passage, because we may tend to think that God's forgotten about us or he's disregarding our pain or whatever we're feeling as we're going through crisis. But it's a reminder that he not only hasn't forgotten, he cares about what's going on with us, and he's ready and willing to help us and to strengthen us. For those that hope in the Lord shall renew their strength. They'll rise up on wings as eagles. They shall walk and not be weary. They shall run and not be faint. I may have gotten that off just a little bit with the wording, but look it up for yourself, and you'll find very assuring words there. Now, for our recipe today, I've assembled some ingredients in front of me. I tried to do a little prep work ahead of time so that uh, we can move things along. I've got dry ingredients here, the flours, the salt, the sugar. I'll tell you what's in there in a moment. Um, chocolate chips, mini chocolate chips. They really work a little better for this recipe. Golden raisins. You can use regular raisins. These are really very good, though. And... Let's talk about the flowers that are in here. Now, when you look at recipe books that feature gluten-free recipes, there's oftentimes a whole host of flowers. If you take all the recipes in there and look at all the different flowers that they use that are gluten-free, you might have a dozen different ones. I tend to prefer to go a little simpler approach and get a flour blend. There's several brands out there in the grocery stores that are good. The one I'm going to be using today is Bob's Red Mill one-to-one -one baking flour. But uh, Pillsbury makes a gluten-free flour. So does King Arthur. So does Krusty's. There's also another brand called Cup for Cup. All great gluten-free flour blends. In addition to the Bob's Red Mill, I put some almond flour which will give it a little nicer texture and spring some moisture to the dough that we're making today. And I also like to, with these kind of flours, measure the flour by weighing it out, scaling it out. I'm using one and a half cups of the Bob's Red Mill. And this tells me that a quarter cup is 37 grams. So for a cup and a half, I need 222 grams of this flour already in the bowl. Then I added a half cup of the almond flour, did the same thing, weighed it out. That's in there already. In addition to that, we've got a half cup of sugar, two teaspoons of baking powder. We've got a quarter teaspoon of baking soda, quarter teaspoon of salt, quarter teaspoon of brown cinnamon. 
Okay, there are the dry ingredients. Uh, what I'm going to do next is add some cold butter, four ounces or one stick of butter, eight tablespoons. And I'm going to use a pastry blender to mix that in. Because this is cold, it's not going to be easy to blend in, but cold butter will give you a better result. You'll have a nicer texture. It'll be a little fluffier. It'll rise a little better. You can also do this after you've put the raisins or the chocolate chips in, but I think it's a little easier to blend it in without those ingredients yet. Basically, I want to have sort of coarse looking crumbs in here once the butter is all blended with the flours and the other dry ingredients. That's looking pretty good. Okay. Add in mini chocolate chips. Three quarters cups of raisins. That was one cup of chips, by the way. Three quarter cups of the raisins. Now I'm just mixing it up. Okay, so next we're going to turn to our wet ingredient. I'm going to use one egg to start. Oh, before I do this, let's talk about the milk. The recipe calls uh, that I'm using would use a half cup of buttermilk. Well, I don't have buttermilk. I almost never buy buttermilk, but there's a quick and easy way to substitute for that. And that is for every cup of milk, you use a tablespoon of vinegar. You put the vinegar in first, then add the milk to the quantity that you want. That'll kind of sour the milk. It will resemble a buttermilk taste. And so what I've done already, I've already put the vinegar in here. Because I'm doing just a half cup of the buttermilk, um, I put two teaspoons, sorry, one and a half teaspoons of vinegar, and then I'm going to add enough milk to make a half cup. Just a touch more will do it. Ideally, you let that set for a few minutes. So I'll let that sit there while I do the egg. Just going to beat this. So now I'm just beating the egg. I'm going to add some vanilla. Half teaspoon of vanilla. these together. And then combine it with the dry ingredients. Now if you're using regular flour, you're going to use two cups instead of the gluten-free flours that I mentioned. And if you're using regular flour, you want to be particularly careful not to overmix it. But you'll see this comes together 
pretty thick, almost cookie dough kind of consistency. But with gluten-free flours, you don't have to worry about overmixing it. You're not activating any gluten, whereas you might with the regular flour. Almost all the flour is incorporated. I might need just a little more milk in there to help it hold together. You can also do this with a stand mixer, but I tend to prefer to do it by hand so I can really observe how it comes together and control that somewhat. Now, you know what? I think this is coming together really pretty well. Now it's nice and thick and really almost like a cookie dough. Trying to get all the dough in there. One of my colleagues coined a phrase that I like to use here in the kitchen. It's not mine. I can't claim it. No flavor left behind. Thanks for that one, Sheila. This is a good suggestion. Good words to live by. So we're ready to go here. And then we're just going to scoop it onto this prepared baking sheet, sheet tray that I have. Today I'm using a number 20 scoop. Uh, I prefer a little bit smaller, but I didn't have quite the right size I was looking for. So what I'm going to do is scoop it, but not go like totally full with it. Maybe a little less than full, but it, it's not critical. I just like it not to be too, too huge. This should give us at least a dozen and a half maybe a few more. Maybe about the right number if you're taking some to work. That is when we go back to work and get to see everybody again. Notice I'm spacing them apart a little bit because they will need a little room once they get baked. Oven should be set to 350. You want to preheat it. And the total baking time will be about 12 to 14 minutes. When these come out, they'll look a little like overgrown cookies, but it's really more of a biscuit kind of texture. But oh, it's got that delicious chocolate in there and the raisins and the butter. All those things combined to make a really delicious treat. So what I'm going to do is put an egg wash on here. That'll give it a nice sheen to it, as well as enhance the flavor. So one egg mixed with a tablespoon of milk. brush here. Just gently brush it on the scones. You don't have to get full coverage. You put it on the top, it's going to drip down. 
but be generous with it. It's not going to hurt anything if you put a lot on there. Now, my family has, and I have lived with this gluten-free thing for a couple of years because we discovered I had celiac disease. And it was a challenge finding gluten-free recipes that they were willing to eat. I mean, they were really, really hardcore. No, no, don't you serve anything to us gluten-free. And this they like, though. So if you have picky eaters in your house, I think they might be okay with this one. Just don't tell them it's gluten-free. They won't know the difference. By the way, my family's a lot more... we figured things out. They're a little more open to try things, and I've come up with some better recipes and so on. First days, though, trying out different things were really rough. I feel for you if you're going through this at the beginning side of trying to live gluten-free. It's not how I would choose to be, but I have to be. Okay, two more. Got to make sure I get Wes's really covered. Okay, I think we're good to go now. So into the oven. I'm going to turn it after about six minutes. So that you'll get to see what it's like when it's all said and done. All right, so these have been baking for the last 12 minutes. Definitely have the color that I'm looking for. I'm going to do the toothpick test. Now, if it comes out with a little bit of chocolate on there, that's just a chocolate chip that I speared. Now, that's pretty clean. Check this big one. Same thing, I got a chocolate chip, but it's otherwise clean. So these are ready. These scones are served best when they're warm. But what I might recommend is transferring them to some cooling racks for a few minutes and then feel free to enjoy. I know Wes and I are going to enjoy probably one or two after the camera's off. And that's all there is to it. Very good and really not that hard to make. So before I go, I want to give you a blessing. This is from Romans 15, verse 13. So if I get it wrong, you can correct me on it. May God fill you with all hope. No, that's not it either. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace so that you may overflow with hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. Take care and God bless and hope to see you next time. Bye-bye.